Hey everybody, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to take a look at the fundamental arithmetic operators that we have in Java. And along the way, we'll also take a look at how you can get console input using system.in and uh, scanner objects. So let's go ahead and get started. So you've got in Java the fundamental arithmetic operators uh, that you would probably expect that you've seen from other programming languages. So we've got addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus, and then we've got increment and decrement operators, the postfix and the prefix versions. And we've also got combined assignment versions of some of these guys, right? So you've got plus equals, minus equals, multiplication equals, divide equals, and modulus equals. And in addition to that, uh, you also got two types of division, right? So you've got the floating point division and the integer division you know, based off of the operands that you're using. So we'll take a look at examples of all of these things as well as order of operations. So let's go ahead and just do something like this where we'll ask the user for some integers and then we'll do fundamental operations on those integers. So in order to do that, what we're going to need is we're going to need a scanner object because we're going to ask the user, we're going to prompt the user to enter an integer, and they're going to perform the different operations on these integers. So we're going to need a scanner object for this. So we'll create a scanner reference, and then we'll do new scanner. And we have to specify where the input is going to be coming from. So it's going to be coming from the uh, system in stream, which is going to be console input, right? Now, the scanner objects are not built in. They're not primitive data types. They're non-primitive. So we're going to have to do an import. The nice thing about NetBeans is that you can right-click on the item, and then a pop-up menu will come in, and then it'll say something like fixed imports, or you can hit control shift i And so then that'll automatically find the import that you need um, to use that particular item. So the uh, scanner object is defined inside the java.util library. So now we're set up and ready to go. And so now we'll create a couple of variables. We'll say int num1 and num2. And then we'll prompt the user and say, hey, enter number one and then enter number two. And then we'll show them the sum and the difference and so forth. So we're going to use system.out. And then we'll do print, not print ln, but print. And we'll have a prompt. We'll say enter num1. And then on the next line, we're going to do something that looks like this. We're going to do input dot. And then you'll see like a pop-up menu come up, which gives you all these different types of options. And so what we want to do is we want to read an integer. So we're going to select the option that says next int. Okay. And then that will return. It'll read from the, from the input stream and then return an integer version of that. So we'll do something like this. We'll say num1 equals input.nextint. And then we're going to repeat that for the second number. So we'll say enter num2. And then we'll do num2 equals input.nextint. And then let's calculate the sum. So let's go up to our pair of variable definitions and we'll do something like so. We'll add that there. And then we'll say sum equals num1 plus num2. And now I want to tell the user the sum. And I want to show that to him with a nice little label. So I'm going to do let say system dot out dot print line because I want it to be on its own separate line. And then I'm going to put in here my label. I'm going to say, you know, the sum is. And then I'm going to do plus here. I'm going to do some concatenation. So I'm going to concatenate to that string the contents of the sum variable. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to test that just to make sure that what we have so far works. Okay, so down here in the output window, you can see that there's my first prompt, enter num1. So I'm going to do like five and then enter num2, I'll do two. And if everything goes right, then it should tell me that the sum is um, seven, right? And so we can see the sum is seven there. Now I kind of feel like putting a period after that seven. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to append that to the very end too, just because I feel like it. Okay, so that's what the addition operator looks like. Now let's do, let's find the difference. And okay? so the difference, and that's just, you know, we're just going to subtract, okay? So we'll do, Difference equals num1 minus num2, and then we'll find the product, which is what multiplication. So we'll call this variable product, and then we'll go down here and we'll say product equals num1 times num2, 
And then what's the answer for division? I can never remember. I think it's quotient, but if I'm wrong on that, then you can tell me in the comments or whatever, but I can never remember that thing word, and I really don't care all that much, uh, you know. So uh, num1 divided by num2, and then we'll find the uh, remainder, the modulus, okay? So the remainder of division that's modulus. So uh, we'll do remainder equals uh, num1 modulus num2, right? So, I mean, if you were to divide three by two, what's the remainder, right? It would divide once with one left over. That's what modulus does for you, okay? So this is modulus division. And that works with integers, okay. So now let's update our output here. So that way we can show the answer. So the difference is difference. And then we're gonna you know, do the same thing for product. So product is product. And then we're gonna do the quotient and then the uh, remainder. Okay, so the remainder is uh, remainder. Okay, so let's, so let's test this and We'll take a look in our output window and you'll see enter num1, so I'll put uh, three. And then for the num2, I'll put two. And now let's take a look at our answers here. So the sum is five, that's true, three plus two is five. The difference is one, that's true, three minus two is one. The product is six, that's true, three times two is six. The quotient is one. Now that is where we have to talk about integer division versus floating point division. So 3 divided by 2 is not 1, technically, right? It should be 1.5. But when you divide an integer by an integer, you get an integer. So this is going to be true. that The decimal places get truncated. So we'll have to fix this in a second by changing the data types of our uh, operand. But you can see here the remainder is 1. That is true because 3 divided by 2, 2 divides 3 once with 1 left over, right? So now let's fix this. So that way we can get the right answer, we can do the right type of division. So let's see how we can fix that. So right now this is doing integer division and we need to do floating point division. So one fix we could attempt to take is to, to do some casting here. We could try to cast each of those variables as doubles. And so, you know, the three would become 3.0 and then the two would become 2.0, so then we have 3.0 divided by 2.0. That would give us the correct answer, which is 1.5. But we've still got a problem because quotient here is the wrong data type, right? Because quotient is an integer, and integers can't hold floating point numbers, okay? They can't store decimal places. So what we'll have to do instead is we'll have to create a floating point uh, quotient. So we'll we'll call this a double quotient or something. How about just the DQ? Just keep it short. So then we'll change this to DQ and then you can see our little error message goes away because now we can store this floating point result in an appropriate variable for it. So let's test it and we'll see that there's still a problem that we're going to have but it'll get us closer to where we want to be. Okay so let's do the three again. Let's do the two again. And then you can see that we actually get the correct answer here, 1.5, right? That's great, but what happens if we wanted to you know, be able to add floating point numbers? What if we wanted to be able to find the difference of floating point numbers, right? So this is a fix for decimal places when we're doing our division, if we're only using integers as input. But what if I want to try to read in floating point numbers? Well, this isn't going to work anymore because you know, we can't store floating point numbers in num1, num2, uh, some difference product, etc. That's one problem. But another problem is that in our scanner object, we're asking for the next integer. So we're going to have to fix everything by changing our data type for these variables to a double. And then we won't need to do any casting anymore. And then we'll have to change this from next int because we want to read in floating point numbers now. So we're going to change this to next double because I want to read in a double. I want to store that in num1. And I also want to store that in num2. Okay. And I think I also want to put a little space after my colon here. Okay, so now let's see how this works. Okay, let's test this. Should fix our division problem, and it should also allow us to do all of these mathematical operations on 
floating point numbers. Okay, so we'll do something like 1.1, and then we'll do uh, 3.4. And then let's look at our answers here. So what do we got? We got the sum is 4.5, that's true. The difference, 1.1 minus 3.4 is negative 2.3, that's true. So the product is 3.74, 1.1 times 3.4, that is true. The quotient, uh, now we have our division, we're dividing 1.1 by 3.4, that's true. Now the remainder here, this is kind of weird because you don't get a remainder when it comes to doing floating point division, right? There's no remainder there, so this doesn't really make sense. Okay, so now the last thing we want to take a look at is the increment and decrement operators. So how do those work? And we'll just demonstrate how those things work. So, you know, if we have int x and y, and I initialize them both with, say, you know, zero, then I can just do, you know, x plus plus. Okay, and what that does is this is the same thing as writing something like x equals x plus one. And uh, if I was to do plus plus x, you know, this is another way of writing x equals x plus one but the logic is slightly different. So if I was to do uh, system.out.printline x equals and then do plus x, then we'll see that the value uh, that is going to be displayed is going to be, what, two, right? And so there it is right there, y, because x started with zero, and then we added one, and then we added one. Okay, now the decrement operators work the same way. So if I did x minus minus, and then I display the contents of x yet again, then we're going to see 1 that second time because you know, we subtracted 1 from x. Now, what's the difference between prefix and postfix? Well, the difference is with plus plus x, you update, then return the value. And with the postfix, you get the value, you return the value, then update. So what, what do we mean by that? Well, let's write a statement that looks like this. System.out.printline, and then we'll do x equals again, and then we'll do plus x plus plus, okay? Now when we do that, what's gonna happen is we're gonna see the one again. This will show one, then increment x. So that way, if we were to do system.out.printline, x equals x again, then this will show two. Okay, so let's see that in action. Okay, so you can see there's the two right there, right? Because, you know, the plus plus incremented x after showing the contents of x, which is what happened right there. Okay, now the difference here between this and the prefix version is if we do plus plus x, then this will increment x first. So that's going to show two, right? So it does the incrementing first. It adds one first and then gets the value out of x. So you're going to see that you've got your x equals two, right? That's the result of that line right there. And then on this line right here, we just show the contents of x again. And so the logic works similarly for um, the decrement operator as well. Prefix and postfix versions work the same way for decrement as they do for increment. Okay, so let's look at one more thing here. Let's take a look at, you know, the uh, combined assignment operators. And all these guys are working like what you're used to in C++, right? So, so if you have uh, x set to zero and then you do x plus equals five, you know, then what does that do? This is the same thing as saying x equals x plus five, which is just to say that it's gonna add five to x. So if I do uh, system out the print line x equals, and then I uh, show you the contents of x, then what you're going to see is you're going to see uh, 5, right? Because here we initialized x to 0, and there here we added 5 to x, and so you can see x equals 5, right? So that's how that works. And similarly, if we were to do, you know, x times equals 2, Right, so that's the same thing as saying x equals x times 2. So that's going to make that into 10. Right? So we'll see 10 here when we run this one more time. So that's how those combined assignment operators work. Right, So there are combined assignment operator versions for all of the corresponding 
math operators, right? So you've got one for addition, for subtraction, multiplication, division, and for modulus. And finally, we'll finish the video by taking a look at the order of operations for these things. So the order of operations looks like this, order of operations. So the first thing that's going to resolve is going to be your post fix increment and uh, decrement operators. Then what we'll resolve will be your prefix increment and decrement operators. And then on the next tier, what you're going to have is the multiplication and the division and the modulus operators. And then after that, you're going to end up with your addition and your subtraction. And then you've got your combined assignment operators. So you've got plus equals, minus equals, multiplication equals, divide equals, and then modulus equals, right? So whenever there is a tie, you know, whenever you have multiple operators in the same expression, then it gets resolved from this order here from top down, right? So let's say then that we've got something that looks like this. Maybe we say y uh, equals two plus six divided by plus plus x. Okay, so what, how is this gonna resolve? Well, plus plus x is at the top of our order of operations. So pre plus plus, right? So then this is gonna be equals five times two plus six divided by, and then we're gonna increment and then get the value out. So that zero is gonna become one. Okay? And then we're gonna do our multiplication that comes next. So five times two evaluates to 10. And then the division happens next after that because multiplication and division occur, they're on the same order of operations, right? They're on the same level here. And so we just go from left to right in that case. So 10 plus six divided by one, which is six. And then finally, we're just left with you know, adding the 10 and the 16, or 16. So that should give us 16 in y. So let's check that out. Y equals y and we'll test it. Okay, and so you can see y equals 16, we're correct. Now, something to keep in mind, you can overload the order of operations here by using parentheses. So if I wanted instead to do the uh, addition first, I could put parentheses around that. And so then that would change the order in which things are evaluated. So then that would be the same as doing, you know, the addition first, right? So then there would be five times eight divided by uh, plus plus X, right? And so then we would have five times eight divided by one. And so then that would give us five times eight, which is 40 divided by one, which would give us 40. So let's double check that, make sure that we got it right. Okay, so y equals 40, so there you go. So we looked at, you know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, two types of division. We looked at um, the modulus operator. We looked at the two types of increment and decrement operators. We looked at the order of operations. And then we also looked at integer division versus floating point division, the assignment operators, and saw examples of all that. And as a bonus, we saw how we can get input from the console. As usual, if you're a student of mine and you have any questions, feel free to hit me up through Canvas email or stop by my online Zoom office hours. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.